everyone in today's lecture we'll see why world is transmitting ac power through three phase normally people will say in case of single phase we can transfer only vi cos phi if it is three phase we can transfer bulk amount of power that is three times more power so your answer normally will be three phase is to transfer high amount of power if you are having little more knowledge on electrical then you would say this three phase is having a rotating magnetic field which helps the motors ac motors to start on its own self starting uh, self starting feasibility will be there for three phase and uh, further you will say instantaneous power instantaneous power for three phase is constant so at each and every instant though these three phases are changing with respect to time but the instantaneous power of all these three phases will be constant and that will lead to produce a constant torque it will give a constant torque it will not give a pulsating torque but in case of three phase no rmf no rotating magnetic field and instantaneous power is changing with respect to time hence torque also is not constant that is also changing with respect to time this is what normally one would answer but this is not exactly the answer because these attributes will be there even for two phase also two phase also yes rmf will be there and instantaneous power is constant yes it is true i'll show you why it is constant and how it is constant hence torque is also constant now coming to bulk amount of power of course it can give 2 vi cos phi of course as it is a three phase three wires obviously it is a little more no you may say no sir three is much more than two okay then why not six phase six phase is having six vi cos phi bulk power is transferred through six phase also and rmf is there this is also there this is also there all these three things will be there and why not four phase why not five phase seven phase eight phase nine phase 10 phase 24 phase n number of phases all these will be there for any number of phases why you are only picking at three phase that is a question okay so let me give you the answer before i explain this this three phase four phase five phase six phase seven phase these phases are having a special importance or they are having a special attribute what is that if it is a three phase if i add first phase voltage or current second phase voltage or current third phase voltage or current you may take voltage or current if i add all these three it will give us zero in case of this also same if i take current i1 plus i2 plus i3 plus i4 is equal to 0 okay and fifth phase also same all are same this will give us the advantage what is the advantage because of this feature transmission line losses are reduced by 50% this attribute will make transmission line losses to decrease by 50% not only losses transmission line voltage drop also is reduced by 50% if i use two phase i'll not get this feature because in case of two phase this condition is not true what is two phase first phase is having at an angle zero and second phase may be lagging or leading by 90 degrees so if i add these two signals you will not get zero all right now come to the point how with this 50% is coming down okay before we go to the proof you may say now all these are having 50% of reduction then why we are choosing only three phase why not six phase the reason is very simple because three is the least number among all these so if it is the least number what is it want is obviously we have to transmit less number of wires of course not only wires if the wire number is less transmission 
tower height is also less. Number of insulators is also less. Right of way, the space. There are many things into consideration. As well as substation, if you go to substation, number of circuit breakers, number of current transformers, potential transformers, you know, power transformers. There are many things, all will be reduced. So we are restricting all these number to three phase. Just three. Because it is being the least number of conductors. Now, let's look at these things in details. Number one, in case of two phase also, I said power is constant. We look at that. Number two, in case of three, four, five, six phases, transmission line losses and voltage drop is reduced by 50%. How it is happening? We look at that now. Okay, let me first take, let me first conclude why in case of three phase, power is constant. Though input voltage and currents are changing with respect to time, but output power is constant. How it is happening? I'm not giving any mathematical derivations. I'm showing this through some simulation, MATLAB simulation. R phase, R phase voltage and current, Y phase voltage and current. If I multiply these two, I'll get Y phase power, instantaneous power. Now, if I add all these three powers, R phase, Y phase, B phase powers, I'll get a constant value. This is a constant. Okay? Is it changing with respect to time? No. At any time, if you see, the magnitude is same. And how much is the magnitude? The magnitude is 3 Vi cos phi. Okay? As power is constant, torque produced by a motor is also constant. Okay? Now let's go for two phase. We have two phases. Two phase means first phase and second phase are displaced by 90 degrees. There is their corresponding powers. If I add these two, you see what you get? You get again constant. If I add first and second one, we have a constant power. What is the magnitude of this? It is 2 Vi cos phi. Okay. So in case of two phase also, you will get a constant power and constant torque, so everything is same. But the magnitude is less. Let's now go for single phase. What will happen? Yeah, in case of single phase, only we have this. So, you know, there is nothing to add to this, so we got the same. What is the average value of this? Average value of this will be Vi cos phi. What is the maximum value of this? 2 Vi cos phi. Okay. I hope now, first point is clear. That is, in case of two phase also, output power is constant. Not only for two phase, four, five, six, any number of phases, output power is constant. Now let's go to second point. What is that? How transmission line losses is reduced by 50%. So let me take a single phase source. I'm taking a single phase AC source. I'm taking some load, three loads of resistance value R. So they're driving a current of I. Each one is driving I current. And this is a transmission line. Okay. So through this transmission line, what is the current? 3I because all these three currents are added up. Total current coming through the transmission line is 3I. And the distance of this transmission line is, I'm assuming it as 100 kilometers length. Okay. So 100 kilometers length transmission line is having a resistance of small r. Now tell me what is the transmission line losses as well as voltage drop across the transmission line. It's very simple. I square r losses, transmission line power losses is current flowing through this is how much? 3 into i. I square is 3 i square. That is the current. R. What is r? Small r is the resistance. Again, current is coming back through the same transmission lines. Single phase I'm talking about. So here also, this is also having a length of 100 kilometers. So this wire is also having a resistance of r, total 2r. So resistance is 2r. So how much is the transmission line losses? 18 i square r. What is the voltage drop? i into r. i is 3i. r is total resistance is 2r. I am not taking this resistance into consideration because this is a load. 
I'm talking about only transmission line losses. Clear? So keep these two figures in your mind. Let's now change the configuration a bit. That is, let me supply these three loads by using three single phase sources, not by using one single phase source. Let me use three single phase sources to supply these three loads. Like this. Again, the transmission line length is 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers. So these three are loads which are 100 kilometers away from the source. If you see, all these three are in same phase. Three single phase sources. Zero degrees, zero degrees, zero degrees. Okay. Now here, each one is driving current of I. If you notice, resistance is increased by three times. Why? Because as the current carrying by this transmission line is reduced by three times, earlier we were having three I, now it is just I. As current is less, we don't have to use such a thick wire. We'll have to use a thin wire to just withstand I. So the area of cross-section of the wire is reduced by three times. We know R is equal to rho L by A. Area is reduced by three times, so, so resistance is increased by three times. That's why it is 3R. So if this is 3R, this length also, this is also having 3R resistance. Likewise, each and every phase. Now let's find what is the transmission line losses. Current is from each Y, we're having a current of I, I square, because we know power loss equal to I square R. What is the resistance? This is having a resistance of, this phase transmission is having a resistance of 3R plus 3R, 6R. Okay? So we have three phases, so I am multiplying with 3. So now what is the total transmission line losses? 18 I square R. Again, transmission line voltage drop is, I is a current, resistance is 6R in this transmission line. So it is 6R. If you notice earlier values and these values both are same. Okay. Now let's change this a little bit. Instead of taking three wires in return, let me just combine all these. We're just, I'm just clubbing it. Okay. I'm not taking individual wire return. I'm taking return through one common wire which is thick wire. Okay, because it is carrying total current 3i. Now let's see whether I am gaining some advantage or not. Now again, current is i here, so resistance is 3r. i, so this is also 3r. This is also 3r, 100 kilometers length. But this one, which is also 100 kilometers length, it is having a current of 3i. Because all these three currents are returning from this conductor. So this is having a more cross-sectional area, so less resistance. So this part is having a resistance of, yes, just R. Now let's find what is the transmission line losses. Let me find for this I square into 3R, I square into 3R, we have three such lines, so I am multiplying with 3, plus this, this conductor loss, 3i square into resistance of this, which is r. Now what is the total? 18i square r. And now transmission line drop, voltage drop across the transmission line. This phase if I take, i into 3r plus 3i into r, which will get 6r. And also this phase, I will get 6r. This phase, I will get 6r. Now, what do you understand from this? This value and earlier values all are same. Okay. Now, let me change a little. Instead of taking three same phases, let me take three different phases. That is, each phase is now having a phase shift of 120 degrees. Okay. Maybe lagging or leading. All are having 120 degrees displaced. Okay. Now let's observe. As we know, in case of three phase which are displaced by 120 degrees, this 
return conductor will not carry any current if it is a balanced system. That's what I said. X1 plus X2 plus X3 is equal to 0. Means I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to 0 here. So there is no current flowing through this. Okay. Now let's find losses. Transmission line losses. Current is I. Resistance is 3R. So I square into 3R. 3 such kind of things. So into 3. And what is the loss in this? 0 square into R which is 0. What is the total losses? What do you understand now? In the earlier case we got 18 I square R but here we got 9 I square R which is a reduction of 50 percent and also here transmission line voltage drop. Let me take this phase. In this phase this is not offering any voltage drop only this is offering a voltage drop that is 50, 50 percent less than earlier. In the earlier case we got 6 R here we got 3 R. I hope now the second one also is clear how this x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0 will help us in reducing the losses and voltage drop by 50 percent. Okay. So this is the reason why we use three phase not two phase or six phase or four phase or any number of phases because if you go for a higher number of phases of course we will get an advantage of reduction in 50 percent but at a cost of more number of conductors to transmit more number of conductors of course obviously you require more space and the height tower height is more and you know there are many more complications. So the least and best number is 3 to get such a kind of feature so we are going for 3 phase. I hope now all of you understand why we are using 3 phase it is not just to transfer bulk amount of power it is also helping us in reducing the losses. Thank you for watching, like the video and give the comments in the comment box below and share the videos with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such kind of videos. Thank you.